Do you use a pre-shot routine? Does it help your game? Or could it be hurting your game? Let's tee it up. Welcome to Data Access Golf, your home for rapid golf improvement. And now, from the thin air of the Rocky Mountains, next on the number one tee, your host, Aaron Stewart. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Data Access Golf. Thank you for joining us. I appreciate it. I have gotten some feedback on the competition podcast, the previous competition podcast, and it's um, been okay. Not totally great. There are obviously a lot of competitive people out there who do not believe that their competitive nature is a detriment. So um, to those, I say, yeah, well, I don't know what to say. I will say this. If we compete and you act like a jerk, then I think that your competitive nature is a detriment. And if you can compete and love competition without being a jerk, then great, more power to you. You've learned something that uh, many of us have not. And that is how to be a perfect gentleman in the midst of competition, which is much harder to do than most will admit. So good enough. Thanks for your comments. Appreciate them. You can always shoot me an email at dataaccessgolf at gmail.com. If you have any comments, that's where I get most of my comments. Or you can leave comments right at uh, anchor.fm at Data Access Golf Podcast. They allow some interaction there as well. So either of those places, look forward to interacting with you. Also have a Data Access Golf Facebook page up that you're welcome to hit me up on that one as well. So thank you very much for your comments. Not to offend, never to offend here at Data Access Golf, only to get better and have some opinions and share some thoughts and conversations. As more come in, we will have those conversations. So today I wanted to talk, as the uh, bump kind of suggested, that I wanted to talk about a pre-shot routine. And I, I like this I like this topic. I like it a lot. I think that there, for most, I think we've been told over and over again growing up that pre-shot routines are really, really good for us. That somehow or another, they get us into a better place to play golf from. And that's kind of the conventional wisdom, I think, from most coaches. And I would say, maybe. Pre-shot routines can be good, but the argument behind why we should have pre-shot routines, I think, is faulty. A lot of them talk about that by going through the same process over and over again, we get ourselves into a place where our body knows what to do, which I find completely insane. I don't know how doing something over and over again exactly the same way can can produce the same result because obviously it doesn't, right? If you do a pre-shot routine and then you hit a real stinker and then you do the pre-shot routine, you are hoping to not hit a real stinker and try to do something differently. And I don't see how the two correlate. I don't see how a pre-shot routine after hitting a bad shot, if the pre-shot routine really is about getting us into the best possible place to hit a really good golf shot, and we go through the pre-shot routine and we hit a stinker, then wouldn't argument state that we would hit a stinker the next time we use that same pre-shot routine? Just saying. I mean, if that's the argument, I, I don't see how that holds up. If you're pay- playing poorly, it seems to me that if you're playing poorly, switch up the, the pre-shot routine and do something else because whatever you're doing is not working. So it goes uh, sort of beyond that. And this concept too, that this whole concept of m- muscle memory, I guess that's going to be a com- that's got to be a conversation for a different day, but there's no such thing as muscle memory. Our muscles don't have memory. What we, what we do when we practice and get better is we build these synapses in our brain that become more and more prevalent so we can access them more quickly, which is great, except we can't really play well using the conscious mind in the golf swing anyway because it's just one second, right? It goes back to that whole discussion about the golf swing being one second and conscientiously, or I mean consciously we can't, or conscientiously, but consciously we can't control our golf swing. So, uh, so what do you do about it? Well, when it comes to a pre-shot routine, then what we're trying to do is get ourselves into a place where we can hit the best possible golf shot. And so that has to be more of trying to get ourselves in a calm place with a quiet mind when we're focused on something other than the ridiculous checklist that our, 
our, our golf coach gave us with the grip, the setup, uh, posture, um, head still, all of that, right? When a pre-shot routine is just a checklist of all these very physical things, chances are we're going to go through that checklist mentally and then we're going to be hanging out inside in, in ourselves or we're going to be in our heads as Gary used to like to say at Extraordinary Golf, Gary Lester, very good man. So that's not where you want to be. That's where you can't play really good golf. So you want to be focused on, so a pre-shot routine should help us get to a place where we can quiet our minds and then remind ourselves to focus on something outside of ourselves, not about the golf swing, but about something else. The breeze blowing on the side of our face, the, uh, the birds chirping. In the case of my son, Canyon, he focused on traffic on I-15. Those are where our heads need to be, right? Outside in the environment somewhere, hanging out with something our left shoulder going back, the balance in our feet, um, a, a certain blade of grass, whatever, just something that's outside you someplace. That's what a pre-shot routine should do. So does it have to be identical every single time? I would say no. I don't see where that's helpful. Do whatever it takes for you to get into a place where you can be quiet-minded and just let the golf swing happen. That's where you want to be. That's, that's the best place to hang out. Maybe you're hanging out with a target and you've got a really, really clear target. That's, that's a technique that I use a lot. When I have, when I'm in trouble or struggling a little bit with the game that day, I really go target focused and I will do all kinds of crazy things to get myself to focus on a target. And that usually can include, do you remember the old cartoons with, with, uh, Elmer Fudd and Bugs Bunny and Bugs Bunny is always trying to set Elmer Fudd up for some disaster. And so he, he puts a bunch of signs and uh, lights and all this stuff like Bugs Bunny's home and he's got a little mailbox next to his hole. So I will picture a target with all that going on around it. Las Vegas lights, whatever, something so interesting that I really can focus on a target. So when I really start to struggle mentally and have a hard time focusing, that's what I do. I can usually kind of work through it and, and start focusing on a target and just let things happen going towards the target. I'm not going to think about my particular, the particulars of my golf swing. That doesn't help me. I, I don't think it helps anybody. So that's kind of my, that's my bit today. If we're using a pre-shot routine as just a checklist to try to get ready and we think somehow or another that's going to help our game, I sincerely doubt it. Just going through a certain bunch of steps to expect a good golf shot doesn't make any sense to me. There is, there is no logic behind that for me. But getting using a pre-shot routine randomly or whatever, and, and that could be just steps that we take mentally to get us to a place where our mind is calm and we're focused on something outside ourselves, then great. Call it a pre-shot routine and let's play some good golf. Checklist no quieting your mind and getting to a place where you can just let it happen. Awesome, right? So use a pre-shot routine for the right things and it's great. If you can't do that, if you start going through a pre-shot routine and it doesn't quiet your mind, it brings up all these thoughts of things that you're not doing from grip to stance to posture to everything else, then I would say blow off the, the pre-shot routine and start thinking about something else that, that's interesting to you, something else that can occupy your mind while you swing the golf club. It's really about distracting your conscious mind as you let the golf swing happen. And that's, again, that goes back to Fred Shoemaker, Extraordinary Golf, being present. It's a beautiful concept. It's one that was so hard for me to, to grasp. But Fred Shoemaker and, and Gary Lester do it in such a beautiful way that if you have a chance, get to Extraordinary Golf, they can explain it far better than I can. But it's definitely from that place you can play much better golf. You can play extraordinary golf, as they like to say. Anyway, thanks for joining us. I know it's a short one today, but it, again, pre-shot routines, I think are, can be very important if used properly. And if they get in the way and make it so you're getting to your conscious self and worried about checklists, then that is an improper use of a pre-shot routine and you probably shouldn't be using one. So whatever's best for you, let's go out and do it. Either way, you're giving yourself data to kind of work on for your golf swing. If it creates a checklist, that's some good data. If you can quiet your mind with a pre-shot, that's, that's some data. And we know that better data always means better golf. Thanks, everyone. 
Thanks for listening to Data Access Golf with Aaron Stewart. Check us out online at dataaccessgolf.com, and we'll see you on the next episode.